Hello everyone! In today's video, we're going to be doing pose estimation in Python using a module called MediaPipe, which was created by Google. So before we get into pose estimation, let's check out what we're going to be doing in today's demo, or in today's video. So first of all, I'll just introduce what MediaPipe is, which is the module, the main module that we're going to be using to do pose estimation. And then I'll actually introduce pose estimation so that you guys can get to know what pose estimation is and what it does. Then we'll check out what we're going to be doing in today's demo, and then we'll get straight into the demo, in which, first of all, we'll do all of the installations needed so that we can set up pose estimation. Then we'll actually set up all the pose estimation variables and stuff we need to do. And finally, we'll do the actual pose estimation, whereas first it'll see your pose and then it'll draw it on the screen. So first of all, let me introduce these stuff. First of all, what is MediaPipe? Well, MediaPipe is a software library that was created by Google, much like TensorFlow, except this one is made for specifically for different projects that you can do with machine learning. So it has a bunch of computer vision, mostly machine learning modules, and in our channel we're going to be focusing on most of the Python ones in MediaPipe, although it supports lots of different languages, from Ruby to Python to iOS apps to Android apps to all of those kind of things. And it's completely open source and free. And all of the code for each of these projects is always and readily available, always readily available on the documentation for MediaPipe. And again, there's lots of machine learning mod models just for these kind of projects. And we can actually check out the documentation. All you have to do is search up MediaPipe documentation, and then it should come up. So yeah, right here, we have MediaPipe, this one, home MediaPipe Google. So as you can see, this is the main MediaPipe documentation. And you can see we have MediaPipe and then we have the ML solutions in MediaPipe. So here we have a, a bunch of tabs. So getting started, you can get started on Android, iOS, Python, JavaScript, C++, installation, all of that stuff. And then there's all the solutions that we have. These are all the projects that we're going to be doing. And I am making a couple more videos on some of these other projects, like for example, Holistic, Hands, Face Mesh, all those kind of things. But in today's video, we're going to be working on pose estimation, which is right here. So we have, we can see an example. So what it does is it basically just sees your pose. And then here you can see there's a bunch of different like solutions and just explaining what it does. So yeah, that's the MediaPipe documentation. And obviously it's there for all the other um, solutions too. And it even shows you which ones support which programming languages. So yeah, that's what MediaPipe is. And it's a very interesting documentation, so I'll put the link in the description down below if you'd like to check it out. Next up, let's see what pose estimation is. So pose estimation is, again, it's a computer vision module. It's a computer vision model created by MediaPipe. And what it does is it detects human figures and it points them out on the screen. So it points out all of the key body joints, or otherwise known as key points, and you can see those on this guy's uh, body right here. So this is a key point here, 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 and then you can see all those different points. So it detects all of those points on any human body that it finds, and then it points those out, and then it checks after it gets all the key points, then it gets the spatial locations between the key points, and then draws a line between it. So that's how it gets the pose. And it does that for each frame of either the video, or if it's a static image, then it just does, does that for the image. But in this case, since we're doing a live webcam feed, then it gets each frame of the webcam and then does that, and then applies it to the frame. So now that you know what media pipe is and pose estimation, let's check out today's program so that we can actually use that to do pose estimation. So first of all, we're just going to have the installation of MediaPipe and OpenCV, which we're going to be using for drawing the stuff. Then we'll initialize the camera so that we can actually get an input or a video feed. Then we'll do the detection and finding all of the landmarks, or like I said, the key points. Then we'll just do the output, which is drawing all the key points and then pointing them out. So let's get straight into the interactive demo so that we can do all these things. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Atom so that we can actually code the program. So the first thing we have to do in pose.py, so I have my Python program here, I'm calling it pose.py. So first of all, we have to import all of our modules. So the first thing I'm going to be importing is OpenCV, obviously to get the webcam input, and then import MediaPipe, 
as MP, just so that we don't have to keep on repeating it. And then boom, so that's all the imports that we need. Next up, we need to do the setup for this. So the first thing I'm going to do, most of the times for media pipe, it's the same setup and imports. So first of all, we're gonna do MP drawing, and then that's just so that we can set up the drawing so that we can draw on the screen. So MP drawing equals, and then MP solutions, solutions dot drawing utils. Nope, it's lowercase drawing utils. All right, and then the next thing is MP drawing styles. This is the same as my previous video on media pipe. And then finally, this is different. So now it's MP pose. So this will just say that we need to get the po the pose estimation. So now we're in MP pose, I'm gonna say MP dot solutions dot pose. So then that's just gonna say that, hey, we're using the pose estimation program. Then we're gonna get the webcam input so that we can actually do the program. So what we're going to do is we're gonna say cap for video capture. So cap equals CV2, which is open CV dot, and then video capture. And then now inside the parentheses, we need to provide one parameter, what video source we want to provide. So let's say you're using your computer like me. If you have an inbuilt webcam inside of your computer like me, then you'd have to put zero because that's the first index or the first camera that it finds. If you have an external camera, or if your computer doesn't have a camera and you have an external one, then you would say one. And then if you have multiple, then you can say two or three. But now I'm just putting zero. All right, so that's for the video capture. And then now I'm going to have a with loop so that I can do with every pose that it finds, then it'll write it on the screen. So with MP pose, that's our variable that we created, dot pose. Now pose is a function so that we can actually get this. So here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna provide some parameters, which is the minimum detection and tracking confidence so that we can see how confident it is in detecting a pose and tracking the pose. So the minimum detection confidence, let's see, minimum detection conf, confidence, and then that will be equal to, let's just make it 0.5 because that's just a good amount. And then same thing for the tracking confidence. So min tracking confidence. All right, and that'll also be 0.5. This is just so that we can provide all the parameters we need for the pose detection. And then inside of this with loop, now if the, now inside of this with loop, I'm going to have all of this, and then we're gonna keep that there. So all of this, and then we're going to put it into a variable. So let's say all of this as, and then we can have a variable. Let's call it pose, just so that we can use this variable continually. So now inside of this, then we're going to have a while loop. So here I'm gonna say while cap dot is opened, which means whenever the video capture is opened, then we want to first of all read the video capture and then see all the poses. So while cap dot is opened, and then parentheses and then that, then we're going to have two variables. This two variables is mostly always used whenever we're getting webcam input from OpenCV. So we're going to have success and image. And then this will just be cap.read because we want to read every frame of this pic video, or in this case, it's a live video. So now if it's successful, then we want to continue. If it's not successful, then we want to ignore the empty camera frame because th that means that there's nothing in there. So let's say if not success, just so that we can handle it gracefully if there is an error and if there's no camera. So then if there's no success, then we're going to print ignoring no video in camera frame. And okay, we need to put that in string format. Okay, here, let's put one string here and then another one here. Okay, and then we're just gonna continue with the program because we don't want it to stop just because there's no video. All right, here we go. And then after that, then we're going to have to, initialize a couple more variables just so that we can set up the drawing process and then we're gonna actually draw the pose annotation onto the image. So here I'm going to have a couple more variables. So the first variable we're going to have is image, which is our picture, dot flags dot writable is equal to false because as of now we don't want to write on it because we need to initialize a couple more variables and then we'll change it back because we need to improve this performance 
Okay, so first of all, after this, we're going to change our image variable, which is again, just the empty frame. So image equals, equals, and then cv2, which is open cv dot cvt color. This is just to change a certain color format. So cvt color, and then we're going to put it on image, which is our frame, and then cv2 dot color underscore bgr to RGB. This means we want to convert it, which it, from it is from what it is now, which is BGR format, and then we need to convert it to RGB format. All right, so then, oh, let's put that here and then like that. Okay, and then after that, we're just going to draw what there is right now. So I'm going to say results is equal to pose dot process, so that we can process it with the pose estimation model and then after that we'll just process with this current frame so that now whatever we have it'll be in this results um variable and then we can just put that back to the user all right so after this then now we want to actually draw the pose annotation on the image so that uh, we as the user can see it back to us so now again i'm, go I'm gonna just copy this actually image.flags.writable oh Okay, we're just going to copy and paste this again. And then instead of false, now we want to change it to true. And then instead of color BGR to RGB, now, since it's RGB format, we need to convert it back to BGR so that now it works with OpenCV. So the reason why we converted it to RGB format was so that it can be interacted with the pose function, which only accepts RGB. But now, since we want to put it back into OpenCV so that we can see it, we're going to convert it back. So now here we're going to say color underscore uh, RGB to BGR. So now we're converting it back to BGR format. And then after that, now we're going to actually draw all the landmarks that we have. So the first landmark that we have is, all right, let's just put MP drawing. That's what we're drawing with. So MP drawing draw, draw underscore landmarks. Oh draw underscore landmarks and then we're going to draw all these landmarks so all the parameters that we need to provide is first of all for this draw landmarks function we need to provide what we're drawing on which is in this case is the frame and then what we're going to draw and then what kind of thing we're going to draw and what we're going to draw with all right so how do we do that well first of all first of all we want to draw an image then what we're going to draw is results, which is our variable that we had the processed image with. So we're going to have results here, results.pose landmarks, because we only want to see the pose landmarks and then draw it on image. So pose landmarks. And then after that, mp underscore pose dot pose connections. And then that's just the connection to both of these things. All right, pose connections. And then finally, the last thing we want to do is say one last parameter. So this parameter is landmark drawing spec. And if you watch my last video on media pipe, you could see that we had this parameter also in this draw landmarks function. So here, okay, landmark drawing spec, and then we're gonna say MP drawing styles because now we need to provide what drawing style we're using. So MP drawing styles dot get default, and then this is all function. So get default pose landmarks because we need to get all of the default pose landmarks and then use that as our drawing style. So landmarks style, since this is a style, and then we're going to use, since that's a function. All right, so that, there we go. So now what have we done so far? Well, we set it up with a few variables and then we got the webcam input and then we initialized our drawing, which what we did was we took the current frame that we have and converted it to RGB format. And then with the RGB format, we processed it with MediaPipe because MediaPipe only works with RGB. And then after that, we converted it back to BGR so that we can see it. So now that it's in BGR, then we actually drew it using the draw landmarks function. So now it's there and it's drawn. The frame is drawn. But now what are we going to do with it? Well, we actually want to see the output, right? So to do that, I'm going to just show it back to us. So how I do that? So cv2.im show, and then that's the function we use to uh, show a function, to show a frame. So, and then first of all, we need the title. So let's just say media pipe pose estimation program video demo. All right. 
And then after that, we're going to flip the image horizontally so that we can have a selfie view display, which is just basically what we can see to ourselves right now. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use another one of CV2's functions. And as you can see, the two main modules we've used is MediaPipe and CV2, but we've used OpenCV a lot in this program because it interacts with MediaPipe so that we can have a good experience with showing it back to us and getting the webcam input. So to flip it, we're going to say cv2.flip, and then what we want to flip is image, which is our frame, and then one, because we want to flip it by one time. Okay, and then after that, the last thing we need to do is have a wait key so that we can handle if we ever stop the program. So how we do that is if cv2.wait key, we're using camel case here, so let's use it as five and zero xff. This is just how you have to do it equals 27 then we want to break and then stop the program all right so that means just get out of that loop which goes through the pose estimation and then finally last thing we want to do is go back all the way up here and then we're going to say cap which is our video capture dot release what this will do is it'll basically just release everything that we have which is in this case that frame so we're going to release that back to the user so that we can actually see it so let's go through that whole code again all right, so first of all, we set it up, then we had the webcam input, and then we converted it to BGR format so that we can work with it in pose estimation, and then we converted it back to RG BGR format so that we can uh, edit it in OpenCV, and then with that editing rights, then we edited it with OpenCV by putting the pose estimation landmarks on it. And then we just showed it back to the user, and then we have our break key, and then we released it to the user. So there we go. That's a successful OpenCV poet, OpenCV and MediaPipe pose estimation program. So let's test it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to terminal. And as you can see, I already have my virtual environment set up. But if you haven't set it up, then what you would do is Python 3 minus M, the ENV, and then whatever you want to call it. In this case, since mine says ENV here, I called mine ENV, and then you would press enter. And then the next thing you would do would be to activate your virtual environment. So you would say source, and then whatever it's called, in this case, like I said, I'm calling mine env. So source env slash bin slash activate. And then that would be to activate your virtual environment. And then after you activated it, it would take a second and then it would put that here in parentheses. So there we go. That's how you start and install a virtual environment. Then you need to pip install all of your packages. So for me, it's just pip install media pipe. As you can see, it's already re requirement already satisfied. And then pip install OpenCV Python just to test if it's, and then here it's already satisfied. All right, so now we can just get straight to running the code. So pose.py. Now, hypothetically, what it should do is, it should have a line around my face, and then it should have my arms and my torso. It should show all that. So let's just say pose, or no, Python 3, pose.py. All right, let's test this out. All right, so here we see info created tens of blah, blah, blah. So that means it's starting to work. And then, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it has my face. And then, yeah, see, you can see my arms and my torso are here. And then if I move backwards, then you can even see it has my torso here. It shows the outline of my torso. And then you can see wherever my arms move, then this moves too. So there we go. That's pose detection in Python. So we used MediaPipe to do this kind of program. So we have pose detection, and then as you can see, it's doing my arms and my face a little bit, and my whole torso. So that's, so that's pose detection using MediaPipe and Python. All right, so that was pose estimation with MediaPipe and Python. So what we did was we used MediaPipe's module and all the models connected to it so that we can use pose estimation in Python so that we can do pose estimation on our webcam. And we used each frame of the webcam to do that. So this was part of my bigger MediaPipe series, which I take all of the MediaPipe modules available in Python so that we can do as many projects as we can. And if you're liking this MediaPipe series, then stay tuned because there's a lot more coming up on those. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any Python media pipe questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.